Coming up, we have finally reached the week of Halloween Horror Nights. I know, we've been anticipating it. It's finally here, so of course we're going to go over all of it once again, plus a little bit more on this episode. From the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 191 of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. The Dis Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. Today, I am joined alongside by my co-host, Mr. Rhino Clavin. Hello. And we are going to have a fantastic episode for you this week. Uh, as I already said, we are going over our pre-Halloween Horror Nights excitement now. And uh, it's because, well, today is, it doesn't matter. But as of the time you're listening to this, it's either the day before the start of Halloween Horror Nights 28, or it is the day of Halloween Horror Nights 28, or it already happened. And I can't go over every scenario with that. But regardless, <laughs> we're here to build up the hype train a little bit more, uh, get our hype train a go in with this too. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to have a very very fun episode discussing that, but before we get to the the true horrors of this episode, we have to talk about uh, a horrific announcement that did come out this week that I don't find horrific at all, but some people out there I know do, and I, I do feel bad for them because it has been a very big loss, but I think ultimately it's for the better, and that is that ultimately this year, uh, and by this year I mean 2019 coming up, uh, there will no longer be a celebration of Harry Potter. <gasps> Why? Why? Well, uh, basically, Universal sent out a press release to all of the the sites out there that I guess are included on the media list, and the press release said, you know, we we had the current event with Back to Hogwarts and its successful celebration of Harry Potter in the past has been hugely successful. However, they're looking to to add in more fan events as the year goes on. And uh, part of that is the ultimate decision to not bring back a celebration of Harry Potter mm -hmm. with that too. So uh, I think the idea is going to be going towards more, more fan meetups right mm -hmm. on a regular basis, instead of going of the method of each year pulling a celebrity panel together at the last minute that yeah. usually is made up of uh, between two to three repeat cast members of the Harry Potter film series. And then, you know, they're saying basically the same stuff over and over again, year after year after year. Plus then having the expo, which is, uh, there's always highlights with the expo. Like I love when I love the, um, the Harry Potter, the Warner brothers studio tour, because they always bring over some of the props mm -hmm. and, and put them into action in, inside the expo center. And it was always cool. Like, uh, last year, what that was the, the one spider. where they had the the no, spider was, was a spider. couple of years ago. Okay. The spider was a couple of years ago. Last year was the one where they showed how um, was it how oh, they the, shot out the uh, the envelopes and yes. and they had the the triwizard cup how it shot out yeah. the the names. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was it. We got there. I know. I just recently watched watched our video on it because I was like, I want to see how far rhinos come. Is a in one year? Yeah, <laughs> it hasn't even been a year yet. I know, but I can I can say you've come a long way since then. So good for you, bully. Uh, but anyways, yeah. All that aside, um, you know, I, I I I think we can be flat out honest. We never really had anything super positive to say about a celebration of Harry Potter, uh, besides acknowledging the fact that for fans who wanted to come together in a certain place and get their little bit of uh get their little bit of nerdery on that's not a word but that's what i'm going with uh, it was a place for them to do that and then also see the celebrities all that some interesting panels along with it too but overall for for me the event felt stale every year like every now and then there'd be a highlight that would that would bring some extra entertainment like this past year i thought i thought natalie Natalie Tena, Tenya, 
I forget yeah. how to pronounce her name. And then I, I Stanislav Blabaza, who yeah. played Victor Crumb. Like I thought they brought a a brush. A, a brush. a brush of fresh <laughs> a brush of fresh air, a breath of fresh air to the event in terms of their input and and that's also funny in a way because if you don't remember victor crumb is barely in it besides the fourth movie and a lot of his resentment that he brought out in it was talking about how well yeah i, I filmed scenes for seven part two they didn't use it <laughs> it's like oh what a guy and uh <laughs> And, you know, Natalie, uh, Natalie, who played and I'm sure it's like Natalia or something and I'm completely just forgetting. But, of course, she played um, uh, Tonks. Tonks, Nymphadora Tonks. And so she had a little bit more impact in the series. So she was able to do a little bit more. But, I mean, when you have the twins come back year after year, it just. Or the, the sister, too. She's yeah. And Bonnie Wright. Like. Yeah. She she constantly is back and forth. You know, every now and then you get Draco Malfoy mm. to come in. It's just it was it was getting stale. And I honestly don't know if it was worth the amount of effort that Universal put into it. I, I'd be interested to see like sales numbers for that weekend one day and see how much they invested into it and see what the re- actual return was in it. But I can't imagine that it was it was wildly successful but uh, as a follow-up to this uh 2019 no the celebration of harry potter the last weekend of of january or the first weekend of february depending on when the dates fall but instead rock the universe 2019 is now happening conveniently friday february 1st and saturday february 2nd so if mm. you're unfamiliar with Rock, Rock the mm. Universe, that's the Christian music festival that they have. Isn't that, that like this weekend, too? It was this past weekend, yeah. yes. So it typically was always uh, essentially like a week or two right before Halloween Horror Night started. To cleanse the grounds, of course. Exactly. You know, it's yeah. going in and bless yeah. all the houses a before. Of burning. <laughs> yeah. Before this all of the horrors. This house is clean. <laughs> I was like, if anyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're doing the Seems opposite. HHN <laughs> is coming to an uh-huh. end, you know, and it, it ends right at the end of Halloween. So then they have three months of ghosts flying around. Mm-hmm. And now in February, they're going to come in and say, this house <laughs> is clean. <laughs> Fantastic. But so that's happening now. So if you already went ahead and booked your vacation uh-huh. for that time period, because... It, Inevitably, it was pretty easy to decide when a celebration of Harry Potter was going to be every year uh, because it was always that same weekend, either the last weekend of January or the first weekend of February, sometimes overlapped going January into February. It was always that same time. If you booked your vacation expecting to have a celebration of Harry Potter, just be aware now that you will be instead seeing rock the universe and that's obviously if you pay for the hard ticket to get into it because it's not it's not a free event just like uh, a celebration of harry potter is so be aware of that just wanted to mention it sad for a celebration of harry potter for those who loved it and uh, could affect your upcoming upcoming vacation based on when you're traveling but enough of that malarkey we are getting into the Halloween Horror Nights hype train now. And Rhino, we want to talk about all of the different houses at Halloween Horror Nights, but uh, conveniently enough, both you and I made a list. Mm -hmm. And what our list is is what many other people do out there uh, on Twitter, everywhere, Facebook. They make make lists about the houses they're most excited for. So we both did that as well ourselves, too, in order from 1 to 10 with one being the one we're most excited about and 10 being the one we are least excited about. At least that's what I'm hoping he did. If he screwed that no, up. No, I did that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't give you instructions on which one was the I top assumed. and which one the bottom. I, you know? I did. And I did make the donkey out of you and me. Yeah. That's Take what that, when iTunes. You we're still clean. Oh, no. I, this, I mark everything we do as dirty. This is clean. <laughs> well, Caroline. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that's, that's just going to keep happening, apparently. <laughs> so we're going to go over it, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the houses as we go through. Our, I'm assuming that our lists are completely different. I am, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that my house that I have at number one is wildly different from Rhino's. Because I can almost inevitably guess what Rhino's number oh, one house are, is. Oh, we know. Let's not kid ourselves. So, it might as well be tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> um, okay. That's that's a choice. But I don't think you should ever go for that. But we're going to still start from 10 anyways. As we talk about a new house, we will bring them up. And so why don't we start with our number 10s? Horrors of Blumhouse is mine. Well, isn't that convenient? That is also mm. mine. So if you don't remember about Horrors of Blumhouse this year, uh, that is going to be one of the intellectual property houses, and it is a repeat house of last year. Last year was the first time they did the Horrors of Blumhouse, where they take uh, Blumhouse production movies and they put them into one house uh, and just blend the movies together. And this year, the two movies that are being focused on is The First Purge and Happy Death Day. And while I, I do have good things to say about Happy Death Day, I've said them in the past, I just, The First Purge is going to bring this house down so much that I don't think there's anything that Happy Death Day can do in order to I, redeem it. I don't like mixed houses to begin with. I I don't, I feel like if if the story's not good enough for a whole house, don't use it. Mm-hmm. And, and like, I don't know why they've been doing this as mixed houses because like when they did Insidious with um, Sinister and Purge last year, it was like Insidious had enough has had over the years has had more than one house that yeah. I, it was that so it's had Insidious one and then it had Insidious one and two and so like clearly there's enough of a storyline there that you could have just made that its own house. I don't know why because I mean. I know why last year, because it hadn't come out yet, so it was supposed to like tease the movie. But this year, it's like, oh, God, get over it. We've seen yep. The Purge. The Purge is the new Walking Dead. I get it. It's simple. It's easy to do. But also, like, it doesn't mesh with the other house at all, because Happy Death Day is about one one yeah. person killing the same person over and over and over and over and over again. And so you're like, I... I I, I get how that maybe may not be able to sustain an entire house because I haven't seen the movie yet, but I don't know. It, I could say it could sustain an entire house by itself. However, the fact is, if I wanted that house, I would have wanted that last year well, we when did, it was we, still fresh. When we did that in Hollywood, yeah. they had it as part of their Blum house, and I actually thought it was a highlight in their Blum house too. I thought they did it well. It was cool because you kept going into the same room, and there were like yeah. the people were in different places. Well, and, stuff. and the fact is, in the movie, spoiler not spoiler, there are different locations that the murders happen in it's just every night she comes back in her bed in the room so it could have easily been been done as a standalone house if they really wanted it to but that's regardless it's i'm not excited for it all expectations are low got me it feels like we did this house last year and i'm i don't and it's not like universal to do like even when they bring back a house they usually bring it back with a twist or something and this feels just this feels the most repetitive it's ever seemed for me. Yep, I'm, but I'm also looking forward to being surprised by it. So mm-hmm. uh, that could end up happening. So, Rhino, what is your number nine house? I think ours is probably still the same. No, maybe. no, no. I I actually have um, Halloween four down here, <gasps> and it's okay. So I want to I want to say that I actually am, with the exception of Horrors of Blumhouse, actually excited for all of the houses this year. Um, you know, I now have said it, and I regret saying it because I. I think I had it out of order with the one above it. But Halloween 4 is still low on the list, so I'm going to say 9 for right now for the show. Not because I don't like the Halloween houses. I actually think the Halloween and then Halloween 2 um, that they did, uh, not last year, but the year before yep. and the year before that, um, were some of the highlights of the events, for sure. Mm-hmm. And But I don't I remember much about Halloween 4, but what I do remember is a lot of the movie I feel like is outside, like on the street. Like I, I remember the girl, the little girl being on the loose mm-hmm. and I just feel like there's not a lot. I think it's cause I don't like Halloween 4 as a movie. Yeah. I, 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 I don't love it. That. So I think that's why I'm not like, I don't know what they're going to do. I think maybe that, I think I'm going to be pleasantly surprised, yeah. but I put the expectation level low. I, I enjoy the entire Halloween series, but I will be honest with you too. I like I am watching all of them this year, including four. Like I have to do that. I want to say tomorrow night, as of the time we're recording this. Uh, but I'm I'm trying to get through all the Halloween movies again before the Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween movie comes out. Uh, 
very, I forget what date that is sometime in October. But so I'm going through those and I've been through all of them before too. And I know some people like some people really enjoy H2O and well, some people like the Rob Zombie one too, which makes me feel so uncomfortable. October 19th, October 19th. I genuinely only really, really enjoy the first, second and third Halloween movies. But so I, I agree with you as they're moving on past the first and second one. It's a lot tougher to get excited about them. That being said, though, I feel like I feel like when they are clicking with Halloween, they just are right on the money mm-hmm. with it. They know how to accurately portray those scenes into these houses. We saw that with the first and second. I mean, it felt like you were just walking right through those movies on it. Yeah. Uh, and it's just it doesn't matter. Michael Myers is menacing. I like that even though there is sometimes a size difference in the person who's being Michael, generally they get scare actors that are all relatively built the same. So it feels like genuinely the same Michael Myers is coming after you the entire time. There are B nights where it's not. <laughs> I was like, I have a not video good. of, of so, a debatable one, yeah. but yeah, and I I fully so agree. Needs with a that. break at some point. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like they are able to work Halloween well, so it's higher on my list. But we will get there when What's we do get there. Uh, my number nine is Seeds of Extinction. That's, okay, that's actually what my number nine was supposed to be, but I wrote it in the wrong place. So. That, that, no, that's fine. So, so it's listed as my number eight, but yeah. Yeah. So Seeds of Extinction, of course, is uh, the humanity has come to an end. Uh, the massive meteor destroyed all of human life and paving the way for the predatory plants to reclaim the planet. So it's violent vegetation hunting down its prey with thorns, vines, poisonous pollen, eagerly looking to devour any life that gets lost into its overgrown graveyard. So I... I feel like my earring's going to get caught in something again this year. Yeah, That's what always happens. The dangly stuff gets caught in my earrings. Yeah, and I could absolutely see that being this type of house where there's lots of things hanging down, hitting you in the face as you're going through. I almost always carry a backpack at Halloween Horror Nights just because I always want want my camera on me just in case I want to take some photos or video. I always... um, and then I want to bring like my cup in there. I want to have a bottle uh, of water that I don't have to hold the entire night. I just I need a backpack for it. And inevitably, my backpack always gets caught on something in the houses. So it's annoying for that reason, too. I think this does have the potential to be a surprise house. It sounds very beautiful on paper, like we talked about when we did the house announcement on it. But ultimately, uh, I, I worry that it's they're going to go too far one way or the other. They're going to be trying to be overly beautiful, and it's going to be like, well, I didn't want to come here to just look at a pretty house, or it's going to go to the, we want to be super scary because it's man-eating plants and stuff, so let's use all these interesting puppets, just terrorizing terrible stuff, and it's going to be like, no, I'm not buying any of this. It seems kind of like bland it's like it doesn't i and i am hoping to be pleasantly surprised you know i'm hoping to see like maybe we move through the meteorite crater like there's glowing rocks somewhere and stuff but it seems very like basic so i don't know so maybe i'll be surprised though you know yeah no i'm i'm hoping to be surprised but again that's why my expectations are low on it and i will give my number eight now and i think you'll be surprised on this especially considering how many jokes we've been making. We already know your number eight. Your number eight was Seeds of Extinction. My number eight is actually Poltergeist. Mm-hmm. I know you just watched the movie and you didn't like it, but... No, no, no. I enjoy the movie. It, it, it had been a while since I watched the movie. So I think I even mentioned that when we did the episode where we did the announcement on it. I'm watching it this week, like yeah. tonight when I go home. So I have a feeling you're going to agree with me. The movie is certainly iconic. We know there are going to be absolute, there's going to be moments that are recreated beautifully in it. Like I, I have 100% no doubt in my mind uh, that the there will be a room that you go past kind of how like in the shining house you had or i i forget if it was the shining or if i was thinking all the way back to insidious but like the you have the tricycle with the boy on it and because they did that in insidious too if i can remember not uh, insidious yeah, too no, there, but there it, was a tricycle in one of the shining houses yeah but it, it wasn't anybody on it i think it was just like on the wall or something that's right that's right that's how or i think one of ours had it on the wall and the other one actually had him in it 
It's uh, well, Hollywood. We went Sorry. to Hollywood, so it's yeah. hard. It's, I can't remember which is which was which because one did have like the hallway faded in and out. Yeah. So you like saw it and then you didn't see it. And I should have said that up front. That's why I'm confused about it. The ones that were in hall, even though Hollywood was very memorable and the fact that it was mostly just dark hallways with holes that people would pop <laughs> out in. There are moments where I'm blending both houses together because I haven't gone back and rewatched them. But I know that the little girl's going to be in front of the TV and with the you're, they're here moment. Well, yeah, and, she better. Um, she better. So I, I, I have no doubt. I think doubt. we're going to walk through a TV at some point. I could also see that being a potential. Obviously, we're going to see the swimming pool tried to recreate at the end. The big spoiler Shh. for a movie. Spoiler for a movie that's been out for remember. years. Don't tell me. I'm going to watch it tonight. You, do you remember the premise of the movie? Yeah, but I don't remember the swimming pool. Okay, then it doesn't matter. The house is haunted because they were oh, they oh, built the, the house over yeah over the over the 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 burial ground yes yeah. exactly so there are going that's, that's not a twist though that's like I feel no. like you know that pretty far early in the movie right they mention it but then Craig T Nelson at the end that's when he yells at the guy you didn't remove the bodies you didn't move them oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's very angry. They they think the house is clean. Mr. And Incredible. then spoiler alert again. Oh, Another uh, spoiler uh, with it. Twist. The house isn't clean yet. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> you really don't remember the I movie don't then. I remember the end of the movie. Okay. I remember the yeah. beginning. I remember the lightning. I was driving to my friend's house the other night. I was like, it looks like poltergeist out here. And they're like, I don't understand. Yeah. I'm like, the lightning, the so, tree. As soon as she says, this house is clean, your mind just shut off. You're like, nope, it's a happy yeah, ending like, right it's there. It's clean. It was a happy ending movie. <laughs> yeah. It was like E.T. Yeah, not quite. But, uh, you know, there's also, like, the as Rhino mentioned, the lightning. There's the tree that tries to kidnap the, the boy in the movie. So there's definitely moments in it that will be iconic however the main thing is it's in the movie a lot of the the scary elements are from supernatural element like all the all the objects in the bedroom flying into into the closet and that's what where the little the girl what what about the clown yes yeah, so, and, and you have the clown but then like you have the mom when she's in the bed mm -hmm. and getting terrorized the actual ghost in poltergeist is a big blue mystical one that you can see through and really scary i just i give my full wholehearted effort into like halloween horror nights being able to put together a house that does the movie justice but that the movie was definitely a product of its time in terms of using in terms of using as many elements as they could to make it look realistic mm -hmm. but it just to me the movie doesn't hold up so I think they're going to have issues with this house, but that's that's just my opinion on it. I think, I think once you watch this movie tonight, you will feel the exact same way. I don't know. I do know. I so don't know. I do know. So I don't. Uh, clearly, you're not going to be able to get through it because you'll be asleep. I know. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm not even that tired. Well, clearly you are. Maybe it's because I'm thinking about. I don't know. I was going to try and segue into the next house, but what well, was your number seven? Dead exposure patient zero. That's actually where I have it too. Yeah, oddly enough. And I'm, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, this house is gonna suck or anything. I'm just like, I, I just am like, not. I don't like zombies. I don't find them to be that interesting. And the outbreak thing has been done, but I think it's, I like that it's like in the theme. And what did they say? It was in Paris or something yeah. like that. So I think that's that could be pretty cool. And it's, yeah, it's Paris in 1982. Uh, Dead Exposure. This is a sequel house to Dead Exposure, and the, a lot of the elements of this to get the scare factors are that only flashes of light will illuminate the scares. So oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, mm. uh, but I, I think that's going to be terrifying. However, I, I think also it's gonna bug me though. It's going to be very epileptic. Yeah, it's I, I see it in two ways. It can be genuinely terrifying, but it can also be a cop out to go a little bit lazy. And I'm not saying HHN is ever lazy. They put their full effort into no, these but, houses. Like, you know, that sort of a scare is like it reminds me of the first Halloween house, like when you would get to the exit and there would yeah. be uh, there was it was a room full of mirrors and it was all Michael Myers and then they or um was it that one but there was like a flash 
and they would move. They do this you were multiple like, oh, times. Oh dear yeah. God! Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. like this is terrifying. But I don't know that I want that the entire yeah. time. It's kind of it's one of their tropes they do with it. Just like back in the they got rid of it for the past year, two years. But the the revolving uh, cylinder oh, that you geez, walk through, yeah, I but hate that thing. That's probably going to come back with scary tales. Oh. But I, I don't know if that for a fact. Shoot, because but, that one's like the hardest thing to walk through in yeah. the world. You're just like, why am I falling over? Yeah, it's and so like they do have their tropes that they always go back to. With dead exposure, I have a feeling if I do the lights on tour this year, I might go back to it after taking a break from it last year. I think this might be a house that I appreciate more with the lights on mm. than actually going through. Well, I'd like it, to but. see the references to like the original house and stuff like that, even though I never did it. But I just want to see. Yeah, there's some of these where I'm like, oh, I do want to see these. Yeah, I completely agree. So, what is your number six then? Graveyard, uh, carnival graveyard, rust in pieces. That is right where I put it too. Whoa, that we is are just um, having our expectations in the same area. I, uh, that's well, I mean, it's easier for this, so that way we don't have to bounce around back and forth. But uh, no, uh, if you don't remember anything about carnival graveyard, this is the. Uh, where do rides go to die? They go to the carnival graveyard, of course. So uh, there's not going to be shiny, bright colors that you expect at a carnival. There's going to be rust, decayed cotton candy, collapsed fun houses, and something sinister has festered there. Anyone who trespasses must pay with their life in the graveyard, where ride parts have become instruments of torture and the walls are painted in blood. I'm sure it's going to be a clown. I, a scary clown. I, oh, I don't know. Carnies. Oh. Small hands smell like cabbage. He's quoting Austin Powers yeah. for anybody yeah. out there. It's we have to try to get in our weekly Austin yeah. Powers quote. So, uh, yeah, it's for me. It ultimately comes down to I, I loved Knott's Berry, not Scary Farm, doing Dark Ride, taking a dilapidated yeah. fun house attraction that has gone and suffered the test great. of time on it. Carnival Graveyard. I know that's not the same thing. It's on a much bigger scale, taking the whole carnival instead of one just ride but uh theirs was bright it was vibrant i like the idea of that to me just rust and tans and grays with the mixture of blood it's just the aesthetic doesn't appeal to me no. the idea appeals to me the aesthetic doesn't yeah it's very rob zombie yeah i i brought him up repeatedly but i don't care for his aesthetic like yeah that's fine i think he's an artist and he's got a specific vision but just makes me feel gross yeah. like no i i completely agree so, what's your number five? Um, my number five is Slaughter Cinema. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's it. See, the, this will come back to be very interesting. I'm just in the middle on it. Not because I'm not excited. I think it's cool. I saw the pictures that Universal um, Studios released about it, and it looks cool because, like, one's a birthday party. I can't remember any of the other ones. One's in a kitchen. Something yeah, is well, like, like they're the scenes from different B movies or whatever. Well, I so. don't necessarily know that. I think like the with the birthday party and stuff, I think that was maybe hinting towards like, you know, how movie theaters back in the 80s and 90s, people used to oh, have their birthday, like the birthday party. room. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. That's what I thought they were going for in there. But then like they had the one room with the motorcycle in and the biker bar like that. That's I the assume. werewolf biker bar. I think. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So there are. um I, th I think it could be fun. I think it will be a fun, scary house, you know? So I, I look forward to it very much. And just to recap on it again, it's there are multiple B-movies that you're going to be going through. They announced some of them uh, in the press release that came out, like the Pumpkin Guts, Amazon Cannibals. So I just... The idea of this house just appeals so much to me because I love 80s B-movies and... Uh, and I, I don't know. It's just I, I still think back to 25 with with the 25th anniversary house that just had one room for each mm. uh, icon and moment in Halloween uh, Horror Nights house that they wanted to represent in there. So it bounced from boom, boom, boom. I think this is kind of the same thing. You have eight or nine movies that they're going to feature on here so you're going to have eight or nine scenes that you walk through that's that's plenty enough in a house and it just captures that one moment in this movie that even though it's not real it feels real mm -hmm. so for me that's why this is much higher up on my list and plus i want to know what a swamp yeti is oh yeah well so, i assume he's a very dirty yeti that lives in a swamp <laughs> like, that that could be but like swamp thing I, essentially i think it's gonna be a swamp thing constantly I don't, but, you know what i don't ever want to assume about swamp yetis that's just my my role in well, life what did you have in your number five my number my number five was actually stranger things 
So get out of this house right now. I think I based on the photos that they released, I think it's going to be an absolutely beautiful house. They clearly did their homework uh, trying to bring the movie to life and or not the movie, sorry, the TV series. And it, it looks amazing on there. I just don't know if anything's going to be scary. If it's if all the scares are coming from the Demogorgon. I don't find the Demogorgon... Joyce is going to come out with lights in her hands screaming about whale at you. And and I'm sure there's going to be moments like that that will catch you off guard. But ultimately, I don't want it where the Demogorgon is just pushing its way out of walls and, and hunting you. And I don't want something like that. The Demogorgon, I don't find scary. It just disgusts me. I It looks like... And I'm, I can't say it on this show. I've told Rhino many times off camera what i believe it looks like i don't find it appealing and not in a way that scares me or makes me feel disgusted it's just it the demogorgon to me i i would rather see uh, what was the name of of dustin's demogorgon in the in the oh, second one um oh god second season that is I don't even it's remember like dot now. It's or something. No, it's like uh, I'll look it up. It doesn't. It, up. it doesn't okay. even matter. It does because it'll be the house next year. It could be if they decide to do it again. But I, I just don't find the demogorgon appealing. So appealing. So therefore, that kind of translates into my whole dart, 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 dart. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why this is low on my list. I think it will end up surprising me. If it chooses to find the scares in better ways, but I hope it's the soundtrack from the show the whole like, time too. Like I want to see Steve Holt swinging the bat with the Steve with Holt. The, what are you uh, waiting for your Arrested <laughs> Development house? Yeah. <laughs> I Steve Holt. Can't, I've been thinking it so much, like Steve, Steve Holt, and I can't believe I actually said it out loud. But like I, I, I want to see Steve swinging the bat with the nails in it. Like I want those iconic moments with the characters. I want a barb in the house. A gross barb, like yeah, dead I, barb. I would I love to see like a dead barb. barb, but barb, I think people just got caught up into that too much. She was just the absolute worst. Oh, no, worst. she was the worst. When you rewatch it, you're like, why was that a thing? It's yeah. because of her sassy outfit. She deserved every little bit she got. But oh, that, that was, was very aggressive. <laughs> she deserved it. So what was your number four? Um, Peltergeist. Okay. Well, we already went over that. My number four was Halloween 4. So, oh, how ironic. It yeah. was the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I thought that when I put it in there. My so, number three. Maybe it'll be the same. Scary Tales. That's where mine yeah. is. Yeah. So we I, j- I, I, I don't usually rank original houses as high up as this. Like, I know. I'm, I am a uh, IP yeah. like mm-hmm. person. But I, I think this actually sounds like a really cool idea. And I mean, do you want to go over it with yep. the Wicked Witch of the West? Yeah, we, uh, we talked about it just recently because it was the last house announced, but it's focusing on the Wicked Witch of the West who sees control of the fairy tale realm and is tormenting all of our favorite fairy tale creatures uh, in what's being described as a hideous and cruel alternate storylines to their normal story. So I'm right there with you. It just, it sounds like an interesting story. So, and uh, I, I, I just, my whole basis on it is just I, I hope it looks as pretty as it sounds like it will. And I, I think it has the I think it has the ability to look beautiful, but also have its really scary moments with like the torture elements. And then yeah. it'll turn around. And, I'm going to torture you, too, and stuff like and that. And your little dog, too. Yeah. So mm. that's uh, that. I really don't know what else to say about that one. I just I put it there on a whim. I just feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna really enjoy it. I don't think our two and one are the same. No, 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 no. They are definitely not the same. Well, no, the, my well, two, our twos are the be. same. I know yeah. what your one is, though. Yeah, no, our twos are the same. Trick or treat. Yeah. Oh, I thought you that would have been your number one. No, and I actually am kind of worried that I have trick or treat too high up. I love the movie, but it was already done so well as a scare zone last year. So to be done as a house, I kind of look forward to it though, because I, I feel like even if they just take what works so well about the scare zone and they like translate that, like it, it'll. I, I'm looking forward to like the you know the werewolves and the like the 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 house again with yeah. the dad and the kid throwing up on the porch. You know they're gonna add yeah. the se- like the exact same effect yeah. in, but. I'm still okay with that. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I. That's why I. I'm still very excited for it. I just don't know if maybe it was too soon to go from scares home to a house. Well, because I, I mean, yeah, I mean maybe because it's, it'll seem repetitive. But I mean, we can tell from that T-shirt that Sam's 
mask is going to be like completely yeah. off in this instead of just like the little ripped open yeah. one they had last year. Yeah, and I don't I don't care for him without his mask on. Mm-hmm. I didn't even care for it with the little rip in it. I like I like my classic Sam. I want pajamas that look like Sam's. I wish they would sell those as part of the merchandise. It looks like the dummy is wearing them, and I want to take them. Okay, we should move on to our number one. We already know what your number one Stranger is, then. Stranger Things. Let's not kid ourselves. And so have you figured out what mine is based on what I haven't already talked about? Um, You didn't really talk about Slaughter Cinema. And that's because it's my number one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to just... I think it's going to bring back those same memories, that same ideas of going through the 25th anniversary house. And that's ultimately one of my favorite houses of all time. Did you do the scare zones too? Uh, I rank those. the scare zones? No, I didn't. Oh, because didn't. it's There's that's like four of them. Come on. Well, really I, quick. Okay. In my head, I just saying them off the top of my head, I'm least excited about the one when you walk in tr- twisted. Yeah. Or is that's, that the harvest? that's on my bottom, the harvest, because it's essentially just a photo op opportunity. Yeah. For you to take pictures of the icons, but it's very not creative. Okay. Fine. Yeah. That one's the harvest. Yeah. And then and my then Revenge next... of Chucky. Oh, for me. But go okay. On. Uh, mine would be it's a twisted tradition, the one with all the pumpkins. What? Get the heck out of here. Yeah. I love the pumpkins. I don't even know what's going to happen in there. I just yeah. like that there are pumpkins. Well, no, and I like it too. I like the thought of it, but usually I always have a problem with this scare zone. Um, even though, like last year, our trick or treat was in there, I loved it. But it gets so bottled up. There's so many people coming and moving. There's always mist being thrown in there. It it inevitably becomes obnoxious to walk through there. Mine's and I Revenge want to avoid of Chucky it. because it's 2018. It says 2018 all over all the Chucky stuff. And that really frustrates me because in the year of the 80s, why didn't they make it the first Chucky movie? Why is it just random Chucky? And why is why couldn't it have been random Chucky in the 80s? Why couldn't it have just been Happy Time yeah. in the 80s? So I don't understand that. Maybe that's a rights thing and they, they can't talk about the first movie. It can only be the later movies. Um, I like like I talked to you yesterday, they're working with the actual writer, which which has like Child's made Play. me intrigued again yeah. about it. So so that's good. But then I know what your top one is going to be, obviously. But my next yeah. one up for me is Killer Clowns because okay. I don't know yet. I haven't yeah. been watching that before Friday. Mine would be Chucky at this spot. And then I had Twisted Tradition because I like the pumpkins. And mine would be Vamp eighty five. Get out of my life. I um for me it has to, number one has to be Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I know because you love that movie. I do. Too, but um mine is Vamp eighty five because it is a, I why I'm most excited to be able to take a picture with the ball in New York City dropping that is counting down to the day of my birth, to yeah. January first, nineteen eighty five. I and so my mom's gonna be happy when I send her that photo. I think I will want to spend more time in there than any other scare zone, but. Ultimately, for me, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, that is, like, I wish I could go back to 1998, 99, when I saw it for the first time, and tell myself, in 20, or, just wait shoot, for it, 20 years. Yeah, don't say that In stuff, 20 years from now, up. you're going to be able to go to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios and see this brought to life. So, that, to me, is where it gets me. Ugh, somebody but, who was born in 1997 can drink at this year's Halloween Horror Nights. Yuck. <laughs> Yeah, that's also disgusting. But that's it for our houses. Wait, where does where does um where does uh, the dance show rank on your opinion of shows? Oh, I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Academy I mean, of like, Villains, it's number one. If I didn't yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, in terms of all the dance offerings, it's definitely my number yeah. one. Number one out of yeah. number one. <laughs> so that is it. That's our hype list. Obviously in the comments down below we want to see what your hype lists are for the event if you're going. And even if you're not, just what you think is your hype list for this but that's going to do it for this show so uh thank you so much for watching listening and thank you rhino for participating Mm -hmm. and uh if you are watching this on itunes of course she's louise see that's what happens i screwed up my spiel if you want more information head over to disunplugged.com home of the show notes page for this show and all the other shows on the disunplugged podcast network uh you can find links to facebook twitter instagram our email uo podcast at disunplugged and so much more if you're watching this on youtube make sure you are subscribed you're hitting that thumbs up button and leaving those comments below like i told you and if you're listening to this on itunes make sure you're subscribed you're rating us and reviewing us so thank you once again to everyone out there for listening and watching We'll be back with you next week for our review of Halloween Horror Nights. But until then, remember, we still have not changed the name. Bye.